Hi everyone, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. I thought for this week, I have the other weekly message up. What is this? Oh, <laughs> I had a little picture of my nephew accidentally in the deck. That's weird. Okay, but <laughs> let's keep going. But I thought I would just go ahead and uh, do a card pull video as well. So let's see here. I wanted more information about what's coming up here because there's just so many changes. Make sure you go back and watch the uh, other video that I posted around this time. A lot of information there about what we're coming into. I'm hearing a lot about burnout and how part of the big shift that's going on is that, okay, there's too many weird things going on. Something just fell and I wasn't touching it. <laughs> it's some weird stuff, okay? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we have so many changes going on around the burnout thing. So part of that, let, let's say people want cards. Okay, so at one time people were very codependent on card readers. There are still a lot of card readers out there that are very entertaining, right? They're like, he's in love with you. He's coming back. He's, oh, oh this connection is divine. This connection is da, 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 da. You know, those are entertaining. They draw you in. They can also do damage if that's not true. You see what I'm saying? Like, let's say you're hung up on an ex that really you need to let go of, but you come across this reading where it says, you guys were meant to be together. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting at? So getting codependent on car reads, not really listening to them for the way and receiving them in the way that is healthy for you. And then getting completely burned out on that and then just giving up on spiritual practice altogether. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, we want to be careful about that. This is about learning what has real value, what really does help you, and what is just there for the fun of it. You know what I'm saying? That could be applied to many areas of your life. So let's get some cards going here. Go watch the other video. Do I have a love partner coming in? Oh, y'all, what if I get married this year? I've been like the quintessential single gal. <laughs> like, what, what if my life changes this year? Maybe let's come back. Let's, <laughs> let's come back to this video later and let me know what's going on for you as well. So we have two of water, a relationship that continues to grow closer, forgiveness, the positive resolution of a conflict. So I was in the other video, I was talking about Archangel Raphael and how Raphael opens our heart space, helps us, you know, come together with others, um, knowing what is what helps us through some soulmate lessons. Now, soulmates don't always have to be romantic. Um, I'm so happy to hear a lot of practitioners finally saying that. Okay. And also soulmates don't need to be permanent. Just because someone's your soulmate doesn't mean that they can just, like, like you got to take nonsense off of them. No, sometimes a soulmate comes in to teach something and then they move on. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right. But two of water is a meeting of the minds here. Some meeting of hearts coming in. Life experience. Here's Archangel Shamuel. The number 16 reduces to seven. So there is some Archangelic energy surrounding a connection. Oh gosh, now I sound like these. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to roll with that. I was just saying, now these, this is here, he loves you. He's coming back in. You know, now I'm actually doing a reading like that. I'm sorry. Anyway, Archangel Shamuel is the Archangel of love, loving connections the higher heart, right? Which is the connection, part of the connection to the divine is the uh, higher heart. And Shamuel helps us reach our soul contract potential. So that is something that, um, you know, it's not just about, well, I'm going to reach my potential in my career. I mean, that could be a part of your path and how you learn and how you develop into who you are. But Shamuel helps you understand the dynamics around partnership. Raguel helps with that as well. So something is shaken. And the life, it, let, let me just read the card. A significant life event, uh, a powerful revelation. This is, this is the weight of this. A powerful revelation that leads to change. Time to spread your wings. So something is coming about that is a shock. It changes everything. This could be information coming in. Some way of being 
is no longer in play, whether that is how you approach relationships or approach your work or approach your life or your lifestyle, you know, how you respond to things, what you allow into your world. Like Shamuel is now saying those lessons are done. Those, that's it. That's over. Don't carry that with you anymore. You can handle whatever comes your way. It is all right for you to love for some of you, right? I mean, it's okay for everyone to love, but for some of you, it might take a little bit more processing through a situation to get to the place where you can trust again. But when Shamuel is coming in here, the biggest lesson I think, especially here, is obviously self-love. So if you are trying to draw in a partner because you're desperate, well, that's not going to last, okay? It's not. It's... I don't, I don't make the rules. Okay. I don't know your life. <laughs> right. So like, you're just gonna have to deal with that. Okay. I love you, but please, like we can't just keep hanging on to things because we don't want to be alone or, um, hanging on to things or putting up with experiences because, well, we're soulmates and I, you know, there's no getting rid of this person. Listen, <laughs> you don't have to stay in a bad situation. This might be part for some of you, what is going on right now, where you're having this revelation of, I'm no longer going to hold myself back because the situation, this group of people, maybe this romantic relationship is guilting me into staying. Guilting me or my religion is guilting me into staying in something that is not serving my highest good or anybody's highest good. It's not um, serving who I am on a soul level. Now, an example that's popping into my head I'm not encouraging anybody to break up a marriage. I'm not doing this. I'm just thinking of these examples where you can clearly see maybe a couple got together because it's just what you're supposed to do. Or I'm getting to a certain age, so I just, you know, it's like musical chairs. You happen to be there. Okay, great. Let's make babies, right? <laughs> so like they start going down this road. It wasn't authentic to who they were. <coughs> Pardon me. Um. They, they didn't really listen to their heart. And now they're in a place where a lot of people, maybe it's family, maybe it's religion, maybe it's the partner saying, how could you break up the family? How could you do this to us? How could you blah, blah, blah. But everybody knows this is not right. This is a big thing that we're going to start seeing in the coming years where Again, I'm not encouraging people to break up families. I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that people are going to take much more consideration before they enter into something as sacred, in my mind, as sacred as a marriage um, or any kind of commitment, right? They're, they're going to take a little more time. Now, I'm, I'm, please, oh God, I feel like I just amped up all the players out there. Like, that's right. I'm just going to keep playing the field and never grow up. That's not what I'm saying either, okay? What I'm getting at here is that being more self-aware, Focusing on self-growth, knowing who you are, having a good idea of who you are, and then entering into a partnership where that, along with this person's energy, you can grow together. You can have this beautiful exchange and there aren't these dynamics that, you know, we have to pretend to be a happy family when we're not. So again, I was using the example of like somebody who's staying in the marriage, uh, but maybe they're staying in the marriage for the kids. And I can't speak to that. Um, if you're a child of divorced parents, comment down below. Because I want to hear, like, this is meant for us to have a discussion with one another. To, you know, give your two cents, okay? Uh, and to put it in there so we can all start having a deeper understanding and therefore more compassion for one another. But this is, like I was saying, taking more care about who you are before you enter into a dynamic rather than diving into it and then sitting there saying, well, it's better for the kids to see us fighting all the time than for them to be in a divorced uh, family of divorce. You see what I'm saying? So there's something around that that is shifting and it is divinely guided because there is a way that we humans have been cheating ourselves. We have been cheating ourselves out of actual love experiences. So one of the things that we have been, if you want to see brainwashed, conditioned to believe we have this certain idea of a love connection and we think that's as good as it gets we go into it we find out there are all these problems that you know the relationship was not 
based on a firm foundation, so on and so forth. Part of what's coming in is uh, realizing that two people who have worked on themselves, who are, you know, I would say spiritually well, that doesn't mean that you have to be like super spiritual. You don't even have, you could say you're atheist for all I care. As long as you're a good hearted person, to me, it's about energy. Like you could be a bad person and claim to be religious, right? Yeah, we see a lot of things happening in the name of religion, right? So, you know, this is more about having a true and good, pure heart. And you can call that whatever you want. A spiritual person might say, well, I have divine love in me. I want to be a carrier of divine love. Maybe someone who's an atheist doesn't see it that way. Maybe that's a little cringe to them to see it that way. And that's okay. As long as two people are not trying to compete with one another, I do. These are all the things that are coming through about this. So learning that we can be carriers of this bigger love, right? A pure type love. And people who have been working on themselves can bring that through. I hope I'm saying that right. Six of air, things are looking up, the end of a difficult situation, taking a trip. This is typically thought of as you're moving away from conflict. You're moving away from, you know, an experience here that wasn't serving you. And again, it's a time of things shifting into a new way of being. And so this is not going to happen overnight. Definitely, if you come at it from an intellectual standpoint, this is not going to work. Do you understand that? That's not going to work. <laughs> All right. So we have to be coming from the heart space. Go back and watch the other video. Did I tell you about that? I think I did 20 times now. <laughs> so go back and watch it. Because again, Raphael is who you want to work with and Shamuel to help you open your heart. Eight of water. We're not staying in old situations anymore. This almost feels like we just got past the holidays. This is timeless. But as of the recording of this, we just got past Christmas. And I cannot tell you how often people come to me and they're like, I have to deal with these family members who are abusive, or I have to face someone who was awful to me, or I have these narcissistic family members or sociopaths in my family. And, you know, there is this um, feeling that you all have to go along to get along and to keep the peace. Ugh. They're, they're coming in here and saying, no, <laughs> no, you do not. You do not need to tolerate abuse. You do not. Now, don't go being self-righteous if, you know, you just see yourself as a victim and everything. That's not what we're speaking to. But you do not need to tolerate someone's cruelty. You do not need to tolerate any sort of abuse whatsoever, right? So educating ourselves on what types of abuse are out there. There's a reason why there's such kickback on me talking about narcissism. Because it is so prevalent. I don't care what professionals have to say. I've lived it. I'm not stupid. Uh, it's so prevalent and people at every turn are trying to just dismiss it and say, no, that's normal. Or, um, you know, you need to grow a thick skin. Like there's something wrong with you for not being able to handle this. Well, that's the exact kind of rhetoric that gets us turned away from real love. It's what makes us competitive with one another. It makes us judgmental of one another. Why are we modeling our healthy heart lives after someone who broke away from and denied a part of their soul and now are just out there animated by fear? Why are we thinking that that's the way to go to model ourselves and our lives after those people? You're learning that this is not it. Okay. So here we have the eight of water, a desire to move on, the search for something more meaningful, spiritual and emotional growth. And here we now have two cards of moving on. So don't forget, we start off with two of water, life experience, moving on. For some of you, is this like, oh, I feel like I'm, you know, I've met the love of my life. And it's shocking. I never thought it was going to happen. Maybe you have, maybe like me, you've been single for a long time. You never thought it was going to happen. And then something opens your heart a little bit. Be careful. Okay. Especially if somebody's coming back and they're conniving, you know, whatever. Um, for some of you, yes, you might be in one of those 
commitments or types of commitments, whether that's a marriage, what have you, um, where you're realizing this isn't it. This is not emotionally fulfilling. The hermit. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is where a lot of people are like, this was too much. Okay, I don't know what the heck that was. It shocked me. I need to process. Thank you. All right, but we have the number nine on here. Now, the nine in angel numbers talks about a completion. Yes, nine, 10 is a completion. 12 is an even bigger completion, but completion is not complete. <laughs> I know this makes no sense. Hang with me here. I'm doing my best. But nine is I've learned the lesson. 10 is I know it needs to change and now I'm taking action. 12 is and 11, 11 is sort of manifesting the new way. And then uh, 12, repeating 12s would be I really now fully have the whole picture. I understand all the pieces so that I don't repeat what I was trying to end, if that makes any sense. So you have the nine here, the hermit, the Archangel Raziel. So when Razio comes in, Razio wants us to think about what is possible. What do we want to bring into fruition? For the longest time, I would listen to other people. Now, being the age I am now, looking back, I realize a lot of people were jealous or they, you know, they're one of those types that were constantly focusing on what other people are doing and being jealous of, you know, their success or the fact that someone cares about them or that they're getting married or whatever, instead of focusing on themselves and what they could do to make a better life for themselves. So I would always listen to people tell me everything that was wrong with a potential love partner. Oh, you don't want to you don't want to be in that dynamic because of X, Y, and Z. Well, I remember one of these cases, it was back when I was in my twenties, long time ago. Uh, I was back, it was back in my twenties and I had this situation where this friend basically talked me out of dating someone because she said there was just all these red flags about him. I'm just looking out for you. Well, guess what she did when I moved out of the scenario, she moved right in and started dating him. Okay. So part of what we're waking up to is maybe we're not listening to others. It depends on your situation. If you are somebody who's in a bad dynamic and someone cares about you and they're like, hey, wake up, you're in this bad dynamic, that's one thing. You have to be spiritually practicing so that your instincts, your intuition is good, okay? Now you, and remember, it's not a this or that kind of scenario. Life is a gradient, okay? So... You might have a love interest, right? And everything in you is saying like, this could be something. I want to explore this. Well, that doesn't mean that that person's going to be perfect either, right? So Razio comes in here and says, look at things like that. Look at where you maybe have denied yourself, you know, something in your life because someone else felt that it wasn't the right thing for you. Comment down below how many of you went down a career path because your parents said that's what you should do. Or you went down a career path because, you know, a teacher said, hey, you're good at this. You should explore this. And maybe you didn't really have a passion for it. You just happened to be good at it. But, you know, maybe you're good at writing, but you want to be a musician. Maybe you have to work a little harder to be a musician, but that's part of the interest in it. Whereas maybe writing comes very naturally to you. Maybe you get a little bored with it. This is that, this is what Raziel is asking you to break through, right? Break through the kinds of thinking and how, yes, he's saying, remember how a lot of other humans will have their self-interests, right? They will have their self-interests. So if somebody doesn't want you to succeed, they will sabotage you, okay? They will put ideas in your head. You know, it could be another thing too, where someone, and people are like this. There are people who are completely maniacal who will say, Oh yeah, go ahead and shoot your shot with that person. They know you're going to get rejected, right? They know that maybe that person that you're interested in has a hard heart and can be careless with people's feelings. And they know that you're very sensitive, but they're encouraging it because they're they're getting a charge out of watching this little soap opera unfold. Raziel is the breakthrough for those types of scenarios, okay? Now from that place... There's going to be a lot of freedom because part of you moving away from situations, I'm going to pull up the six of air here with that, is you stop, you're going to stop yourself from listening to bad advice. 
and recognizing a little bit better who's just out for themselves and want to self-sabotage me. So the Hermit Archangel Raziel, spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, self-discovery. We're in a huge time of this. And when we start to get into a place where we're going to be rebuilding our lives, right? Because we've now let go of stuff that we know does not serve us. I can't, I, I'm sorry to say this. I can't help but feel like some of you are moving away from, it could be a marriage. You could be, I don't know, for some of you, this is going to play out. If you want a reading with me, angelsouls444.com. That's my standard reading offering. Doesn't require any time commitment on your behalf. Or you can schedule a live session with me. Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. I also have one-on-one -on -one courses that I do with people. So if you want to work on it with me, then there you go. You can do that. But I feel like there are a lot of dynamics here where you were always told here is the key to success. If you act like this, this, and this, and you make this, this, this choice in your life, then that will be the key to happiness. I think a lot of you have followed all the rules. You've listened to all that advice. And then you're like, I don't, I'm not any happier. I don't feel like I'm on my path. I don't feel like being a lawyer was my thing, right? Or I went down this road of, you know, working on getting a lot of attention on me because people said that was the key to success. And I'm realizing what I want is a quieter life. I'm realizing that real love is you know, the real passion might be doing a project on your own instead of being out in front of the world. Or if we're talking real love, you know, uh, is real love the person who just looks good standing next to you? Or is that the person that you can cuddle up with and, and have a deep chat with? You know, I'm a Scorpio, so I, I value deep chats. I don't know. Maybe not everybody does. But, you know, it, it's that sort of thing where we're turning around and really examining what truly brings us happiness. What what does that really mean? So what I'm getting at here is I think some of you, you know, hey, if you live in this town or this city, you marry this person, you have this many kids, you have this type of job, you make sure you show up to these kinds of events. Your, where's that card at? <laughs> Your big moment here is like, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this so much. I hate going to these events. I'm lazy. It's okay to admit that. It's okay. I'm lazy. I won't be at home. You're probably not lazy. You're probably just drained. But, you know, I want a quieter life or I want something, you know, that isn't so showy or what have you. Okay. Wanting to get real. Yeah. Wanting to have a moment of realness. A lot of honesty here. Again, that might be coming from someone else or you're just getting really honest with yourself. And release. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll I'll end the card reading with this card. But number on here is 13. Reduces to four in angel numbers. That would be your guardian angels coming forward and helping you through this tough time. So this is release. Archangel Osriel. The end of a phase or a situation. Spiritual transformation. Time to move on. Let's recap. Um, okay. Powerful revelation that leads to change. Transformation. Time to move on. Time to move on. <laughs> Time to move on. Figure out your stuff, okay? Because this is coming in. I think this is a good thing for humanity. Why am I being so dramatic? I'm not being dramatic or hyperbolic. I think this is a good thing for humanity because imagine if we're in a world of people who, if they're going to be, let's go with the couple idea. If they're going to be in a couple, it's because they genuinely in a big way, not an ego way, but in a genuinely divine way. Can I say that? <laughs> in a divine way, love each other and have a soul connection. Imagine what kind of energy that puts out into the universe as opposed to a karmic connection, an ego connection, or however you want to see that. Um, think about people living authentically and being real with themselves and with others what kind of energy that puts out into the universe. If really you want to be a baker, but you studied law, let's go back to that example. It's fresh. Okay. I got it. I got it right here. <laughs> and you go off and you start being a baker and maybe you're the one who makes wedding cakes or birthday cakes or whatever. 
You get to be a part of someone's special occasion and this just brings you a lot of joy. This is what we're doing. This is it. And I don't know what it's going to look like for me either. I'm a little curious. A little confounded. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, but Raphael's in here saying, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of any of this. Because again, we have been cheating ourselves due to a narrative that has just been ingrained in us about who we're supposed to be. And it's gotten us off path with who we really are. We're getting back to that now. I'm not promising it's going to be pleasant. But it will be for the best, ultimately. So again, if you want to work with me, you want to be working on your spiritual practice right now, angelsouls444.com for the standard readings or email me for a live session, whether that is a course or a live reading, one-on-one. -on -one. Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail. Dot com. I hope this was helpful. Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.